Oh, praise the Lord, brethren, those are viewing and those who are hearing. <clears throat> we are going to pull once more for, for coming back to air when we are splitting down the element and the term forgiveness. Just a quick reminder, it's once again Rogers Wanzagiro, a teacher of the word, a teacher of the soul by God's grace. Uh, last time we were able to look at the introduction of forgiveness and we looked at it in a, a very elaborated way. Just a quick reminder, one more thing you don't have to forget, that he, when you have a wound at heart, whether accidental or intentionally, that you are holding somebody, you've chosen not to forgive him, just get it from me as a reminder that you'd have chosen the root of disobedience, and therefore you'll be tormented the rest of your life. You'll be judged and you'll get no blessing. But the good news of their side that when you choose to obey the voice of the Lord to forgive, we agreed and the principle says that you are going to be blessed and you will heal. Now, also put in mind as you proceed the next city of this, the requirements of the lasting requirements of lasting forgiveness, what do you need to have somebody forgiven fully and you get healed? Remember, last time we said that one should always be tortured until she forgives those who hurt them. So if you choose to live the life of being in torment, of being tortured, oh, you have chosen it. But today, last time, we were able to give you the options. We want to begin once more with the lasting, with the requirements uh, to lasting forgiveness, where you will be comfortable and you will be assured that indeed I have forgiven somebody. I want to make a reminder that forgiveness is like repentance. You don't have to do a thing. You don't have to repent a way that you will again repent it again. You don't have to forgive and at one time you regret or re <laughs> repent why you forgive somebody. So that's forgiveness. So you need to have these steps. You have two alternatives at hand to forgive or not forgiving. But I'm interested in giving you how you'll be healed. How fully are you going to get out of judgment at heart? And therefore, the first step of the require of the lasting the requirements for lasting forgiveness is open your heart. Open your heart any time and choose to forgive. If you do not choose to forgive, take from today, for me today, that you can't forgive anyone unless you open your heart and be ready to forgive that person. If your heart is closed, I want to remind you that when you have not forgiven, your heart is closed towards that person. And therefore, the first step to having a lasting forgiveness is open your heart and choose and be ready to forgive that person. Matthew chapter 6, verse 14 and 16, after the Lord's prayer, it says it's clear that he, if you, it says very clearly here, uh, that he, for if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you, uh, if you do not forgive your brethren their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. Therefore, if you are to have your heart at peace, choose to forgive. Choose to forgive. Even our text of this study of Matthew 18, verse 35, says very well that so my heavenly father will do to you if you do not forgive your brother from the heart from your heart all 
he has done it to you. So choose to forgive, be ready and choose to forgive. Then you'll be free. And therefore, Colossians 3, 13 tells us that you must choose to forgive because God chose to forgive the world through Jesus Christ. If God, the divine power, chose to forgive, then you don't sit there and think that holding a person will make you gain. The second step, have compassion to that person who hurt you. By the way, if you are to have compassion, that is putting yourself in the position of that person. If you put yourself in the position of that person, that if it was me who has a heart another person, that is having compassion. And you must remember anything good this person can do, also put in your heart that this person can do something good. Different from the bad he did to you. Oh, remember the good he has ever done to you. <coughs> I know people who hurt one another have ever been great friends. And therefore, like this master, he remembered the way perhaps this servant rescued the sheep, rescued the goats, maybe rescued him from robbers one time. And he was moved with compassion and he forgave him. So remember, please, also, if you are to move, to be moved with compassion, involve your sense of humor. Develop a sense of humor. Humanity. Okay? Let your feelings come in by placing yourself in that position. Praise the Lord. So, if you, you are to have lasting forgiveness, forgive others, please have compassion upon those people. Look at them suffering. Look at yourself suffering. Be empathetic. Step number three. Choose to remove that person from the inner prison of your heart. From your inner heart prison. If you have not forgiven somebody, if you are holding somebody, you have a prison. Did you know that? You might have not known. But you have a prison. It has a door. It is built in you. That person is hidden there. You have locked it yourself. Even some of you have thrown the keys. You don't want to know. Somebody is there suffering in a cage. Inside a small, it can be even a, big, a, big, a prison of a big room. But in your inner heart prison is a small cubicle where you oppress that person. He can't turn. And the same way you cannot turn is the same way you cannot turn. Because you are limited when you don't forgive, like we said last time. So, choose to remove that person from your inner heart prison. If you are to do this, you must separate this person from the trespass. Separate that individual. If it was Rogers, separate Rogers from the evil. The evil is brought by the devil. But this person is God's image. Separate him from the evil. If you separate him, then you'll be able to get out him out from that in a hearty prison. Or else he, he will remain locked into that inner prison. And you remain limited. You remain suffering until you choose to open up your heart and leave, pick him out. Step number four. If you have chosen to remove him from the prison, therefore, <coughs> mention or confess all the evil, the sins, the trespass, the wounds this person has caused to you. Mention them to him <coughs> or mention them in your prayer. Mention them. Maybe he made you fail to have a job. Mention them. Maybe he failed your marriage. Ah, he touched your painful part. Mention. Mention them as you are releasing him out of your heart. So if you do that, please, you, I'm releasing you. You caused me pain. You made me miss a job. You made me ashamed. Mention those things. As you mention them, you're going to be relieved. And as you get relieved, somebody gets out of the cage. And as he gets out of the cage, you dismantle, you break that 
Chubiko, you had the beauty in your heart for that person. Wow, look at the relief you are going to receive. The space that it was a prison is now going to be filled with the word of God. It's now going to be filled with the more reasonable thing, more important things that develop you than holding that person who is, who is the, making you diminish. Wow, the last step. Yeah. I hope you're following. And if you're following, the last step, now that you have relieved him, you have put him out of the prison, you have mentioned whatever he has done, look at how you are relieved. Look at how partly you are feeling, ah, you are feeling sad. Now, forgive that person and do good to that person. The moment you still feel like you, you don't want anything good to happen to that person, you have not forgiven him. The moment you feel free, something good happens and you are together in joy with that person, then you have forgiven that person. Look at chapter 5 of Matthew, verse 43 to, uh, to 45. The Bible is clear that you have heard that it has been said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. That one I know you know it. Even the socialists, even the thieves, even those who don't know Christ do that. But first 44 says, but I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be the children of your father which is in heaven. For he makes his son to rise on the evil and the, on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. Look at this heavenly father, whom you say is your father. If you do not do good, then you have not forgiven. And it is clear that he, if you do good to those who do bad, those who hurt you intentionally, those who blaspheme you intentionally, do good to them. And when you do good to them, you are going to be blessed. If you curse them, you are going to be cursed. If you hold them, you are going to be held. You are holding your blessings. Now, take these points very clear. If your forgiveness can come to you, forgive everyone, every individual who hurt you, purposefully or accidentally. You know those people. Because those who hurt you accidentally, even one time are tempted to come and tell you, forgive me, but you have held them. You feel that it is impossible to forgive them. But they came. If somebody comes to say forgive me, then he hurt you not intentionally. Forgive them. Forgive everyone for every single trespass. Not some of them, but every single is when you are going to increase space at heart. Forgive every person or every group of people that caused you a wound in your heart. You know them. When I'm talking, when you close eyes, you're seeing them. Now, forgive everyone, whether is living or is dead, so long as you still hold, have a wound at heart. I would say, now that one died, he has gone with his curses. No, please, forgive them. Then you don't hold their soul. Also, you, your soul will not be held. Whether those people ever recognize your forgiveness to them or not, forgive them. There are people who don't even recognize that you've forgiven them, but forgive them. There are those who say, hmm, that one is inferior. He has to cowardice and forgive me. Please. For the heavenly principle, whether they recognize that you've forgiven them or not, do it. For it is a heavenly principle. So, whether those people change their action or not, forgive them. By the way, let me bring this clear that you don't forgive people <laughs> because they will not sin again. Mm -hmm. You don't forgive people because they will not sin again. But it is because it is God's will and a principle. And it will help them to come out of such acts. 
So that's why you need to forgive them whether they change their actions or they don't. Play your role. The Lord will play his role. And he will bless you than he cursing you. My dear ones, forgive people whether they apologize or not. Can you imagine? I even told him I've forgiven you, but he didn't even show a sign of being sorry. Uh -uh. Whether they apologize or not, forgive them. And I want you to make this clear that he, I'm making this one clear that he, forgiving does not mean that you accept evil. Okay? And some people have taken advantage of some people because they forgive. So it doesn't mean that those people accept evil. But it is the way to help people come out of such evil characters. Eh? When you forgive, you help others come out of those evil characters. Because when he survives like four times, you say, hey, so and so forgave me. So and so forgave me. Now again, I'm suffering because of the very thing. They will come out later. Don't mind whether they get out now or not, but God, who's the witness, will always be there to make them come out. Listen, forgiving, forgiving does not mean your relationship is cut off from those people. Instead, it is renewed. Such a relationship is renewed with vigor, is renewed with care, and your life, social life is improved. My dear ones, those steps, if they are taken, if you are able to open your heart to choose to forgive, if you have compassion upon those people who have done you evil, if you choose to remove them from heart and break that heart prison where they have kept them, and if you mention each evil they have done, and lastly, forgive them and wish them good. Ah, for God's sake, peace of mind and heart is with you. Those are the steps for lasting forgiveness. Do it, try it out, and you receive the healing of the heart. But it's hard when you don't have Jesus Christ. You need Jesus Christ to help you do this. That voice that keeps following you, humble and cool, reminding you of what is good will always speak to you because the Spirit of the Lord is there to teach us, to remind us, and guide us, and counsel us. It will cool your temper always when we see Jesus Christ. God bless you. Let's meet in another episode where we are looking at what happens if you don't forgive others. God bless you. Bye-bye.